Okay, the PSEI had an average month while the SMP had its best month since July of 2022. Let's talk about some strategies for December and beyond. My name is Den Slim and welcome to another episode of Monday Market Outlook. Now, one of the greatest investors of all time, Charlie Munger, died last week at 99. He is the epitome of value investing and he will be greatly missed. Let's take some time to go over some of my favorite quotes from Charlie Munger. He said, invert, always invert. This means we tend to create justifications for our actions one way, right? Like, why should I buy this? Why should I do that? But inverting means that you also have to think about the inverse. Why shouldn't I buy that? Why shouldn't I do that? This keeps us objective and forces us to evaluate both sides of the decision. Also, a great business at a fair price is superior to a fair business at a great price. No, It's okay to pay a reasonably high price for businesses whose intrinsic value and growth potential make it a solid long-term investment. On the other hand, a fair business, even at bargain prices, may have underlying issues or limited growth prospects, making it a riskier investment despite the tempting low cost. So take this to heart, especially when you are investing for the long term. Now, on to some news Last week, we got some GDP forecast no, for 2023 for the Philippines. S&P Global reaffirmed its triple B plus rating. Uh, this is good news because a reaffirmation of the triple B plus rating means that we can be upgraded to the next level. But their projection was upgraded to 5.4% up from their previous forecast of 5.2%. Inflation is expected also to settle at 5.9% this year, slightly above 58 last year, but is expected to ease to 3.4% next year. AMRO also came out with their forecast, slashing their forecast down to 5.9% from 6.2%. Also, the Bank of America sees our GDP growth rate at 5.4%, which is up from 4.8% previously. So we are seeing 5.4, 5.4, 5.9. We are seeing different analysts slowly converge into the upper 5% forecast for our GDP growth rate. Now, while estimates are well below the Philippines target of 6 to 7%, our growth rate is still among the highest in terms of the global growth at the fourth spot, only behind India, Bangladesh, and Colombia. Even for 2024, analysts are still expecting the Philippines to continue to perform well with an estimated GDP growth of around 6.3%. Also great for the Philippines is that the global economic outlook is projected at an average of only 2.9% in 2023, followed by 2.7% in 2024. For Asia, is expected to continue to account for the bulk of global growth in 2024 and 2025. Unfortunately, the Philippines is not seeing the love from foreign investors as most are flocking to other Asian markets like Thailand, or Vietnam. Hopefully, they can give love to the Philippine markets this Christmas and for 2024. As inflation in the Philippines continues to ease, no? analysts are now anticipating a BSP rate cut as early as the second quarter of 2024. Now, if we look at the year-on-year -year inflation chart, we will mostly get good reads in the next few months as the readings will come off a high base. No? Look at last November, December. So the year-on-year -year reading means year-on-year. -year. So they're comparing November to November. So if we are going to anticipate November numbers, it will be coming off a high base. No? So uh, it would be interesting to see how the year-on-year -year number looks like also for January 2024, coming from a high base of 8.7%. Now let's look at the PSEI charts, the 
PSEI broke out of this supply area here at 6,250 only to reverse and correct back to this key area. So if we look at the weekly charts, the PSEI was pretty much undecided on where it wanted to go. But the shorter term chart, as we go back to the one day chart, the shorter term chart suggests a, an uptrend and this could be a healthy pullback. The market seems to have found some support here at 6,200. Hopefully, we can see the PH markets rally next week as we continue to see good outlook from analysts for 2024. Also, next week, inflation and unemployment numbers will come out. So, hopefully, we get some good reads to further fuel this rally. You know? Now, following on our A-read coverage, we had a great bounce of the 2820 level looks like a bullish engulfing candle here and hopefully we continue to see strength this week as foreign selling has seems to have capitulated for a read and the last two days i think we've begun seeing some net foreign buying no? now pullbacks like this are welcome opportunities especially for great companies how do we identify great companies, right? So let me show you a simple way to look at some company financials. Of course, you have to look at the company story. A REIT, it's a REIT. They've diversified well, okay? We have a good story here. But let's look under the hood and look at their financials, no? So if you have trading view, right, I suggest you use it also or any other platform that shows you some financials. For trading view here, you can just open up this window here when you are highlighting a stock and it will show you some stats here some volumes etc now look at more financials here now this is the quarterly financials you can go to annual and see their income statement so this is a very simplified way of looking at it of course there are nuances when looking at financial statements but let let me just show you a very quick way to look at financials right so we have your top line numbers the reason why it's called top line because it's in the top right so you remember the top line and then bottom line right so the top line number shows the gross profit is the gross profit increasing right five five nine six eight four one one seven one six six two point four eight three point seven right look at that growth rate 71 41 49 48 in the trailing 12 months meaning from today trailing back 12 months and as we are near the tail end of 2023 we can assume that the bulk of this 11 months of this represents 2023 and look at 2023 4.78 up from 3.7 so we are seeing spectacular numbers from a read now are they making money let's look at net income right this is their ipo so it's uh it's unusually high but if we look at the trend here it's the same 2.43 2.89 and now it's 3.72 net income so that's less expenses and all that stuff no so and so is this a great company yes right look at cash flow also it's quite positive they've been positive cash flow for the last three years there's no data for REITs uh, for the trailing 12 months but we can also expect good numbers for 2023 balance sheet do they have a lot of liabilities they don't total assets and liabilities look at that no they they don't have a lot of liabilities compared to their assets so they're not as susceptible to interest rates now uh let's look at tell for example tell let's look at tell and see their income total revenue or gross profit let's see we have 111 billion 116 billion 121 85 billion or total revenue right look at the growth rate one percent three percent six percent six percent six percent yeah of course given that this is a much larger company and it's harder to grow a much larger company right uh gross profit see it went down net income also let's look at the bottom line numbers look at that growth seven percent eight percent then 10 billion what happened here 2022 remember 48 billion overrun right now trailing 12 months also 10.98 billion it's down so there's something wrong here if you look at cash flow 
look, it's negative. And if we look at the balance sheet, okay, you have assets, liabilities. Liabilities at least is less than assets, but there's still too much liability, I, I think, for tell, no? And you really want to see assets higher than liabilities because if we go to Dito here and look at their assets and liabilities here, liabilities, assets, right? They owe more than what they can pay. So is Tel a great company or a fair company, right? So when Tel went down to what, 1,100 or even if it went down to 1,000, let's look at the charts. Even if it went down at 1,000, is this something that you should be looking at, right? Because for me, I think there are better companies and this just goes to what Charlie Munger said, buy great companies even at fair prices, no? Okay, so last week we also saw some drawdowns from some of the big stocks like BDO, right? We, see a, we saw a drawdown, Metrobank, JFC, URC, even ICT, etc. So what happened here, there was an MSCI rebalancing on November 30, which had some down weights for Philippine stocks. Notice that we are seeing some signs of rotation happening from banks. Look at BDO, BPI, and Metrobank, where the prospects of interest margin growth rate has significantly slowed. No? And they are now rotating into properties, Ali, SMPH, where the prospects of a rate cut next year may signal better days ahead for the real estate sector. So on to the global markets. We have the S&P 500 rallying to year-to-date highs, hitting our critical level here at 4,595. If we look at the weekly charts, it is on its fifth straight week of gains, riding on comments from Fed Chair Jay Powell that they are happy with the way inflation has gone down in the last few months. He said that the U.S. has seen inflation coming down fast or faster than most other economies. And he added that inflation since June had been coming down very meaningfully and significantly and that rate hikes had finally given a lot of payback this year. But remember that the whole messaging actually during that speech was more hawkish. He said that it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or even to speculate when rate cuts might happen. Obviously, the bonds market strongly disagreed with the Fed as we see the 10-year yields drop well below the support zone to settle down here at 4.197%. So, Bill Eichmann also calling the Fed's bluff, speculating that a rate cut can happen as early as the first quarter of 2024 as we are currently seeing or beginning to see signs of weakening in the economy. Now, this has changed the Fed probabilities for March 20 to 46.3%, which is up significantly from 27.4% a week ago and 11% a month ago. So, if we look at the probability table, we can see the probabilities converging towards a rate cut either March or by May. So let's analyze how we came about two conflicting statements. The market is beginning to see signs of the economy cooling, right? Because we've been getting economic reports that suggest that we could be headed into a soft landing instead of a recession, right? So currently the job market is cooling, but it's hasn't collapsed yet. Inflation pressures are moderating on a broader scale and while spending is up, yes, the outlook for spending continues to deteriorate. Now, let's take a look at the GDP numbers for the US. Despite the high interest rate environment, the economy still managed to grow. And look at that, the third quarter GDP estimates were actually even adjusted from 4.9% to 5.2%. So we are still seeing steady growth in the U.S. economy. All this while inflation has significantly gone down to around 3.2%. Now, unemployment has started to go up, a sign of cooling in the jobs market, but not to the point of collapse. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, record sales, but mostly 
on buy now, pay later schemes. So I'm just wondering how the pay later side of things will play out. So all in all, since late November, we are starting to see the effects of Fed rate hikes as we are seeing indicators the way they should have gone up you know, or down a few months ago. What is Jay Powell saying? You know? what, why does the Fed even cut rates? Now, let's look at the thinking of the Fed here. You no, know? Policymakers do not just cut rates just for the sake of cutting, right? What is the compelling reason to start monetary easing? And even if they had a compelling reason, the rate cuts will not happen quickly. It will decrease slowly unless something breaks, right? Which will force the Fed into more aggressive action. No? So what does it mean when something breaks? When the economy has a sharp slowdown and a sharp rise in unemployment. Does the Fed wait for the economy to break before cutting rates? Or do they cut rates early to avoid breaking the economy? Right, Because in the later scenario, if they pause rates too early, there's a risk that inflation may start going up again. But we also have to consider that it is an election year next year. Could there be pressure from the White House to avoid a hard landing? Mm, okay, so going back to the S&P 500 charts, as we push towards year-to-date highs at 4,600, what can we look forward to this week? The strong finish last week still points to the market grinding upwards. This leaves the market poised for a strong December as investors look forward to this momentum no, extending hopefully into a Santa Claus rally. Another factor to consider is that market breadth has significantly improved for the first time. No? So let's look at the Magnificent 7 stocks. So what happened here? The Magnificent 7 stocks have actually gone down. No? Last week when the markets were consolidating here, look at the markets they were consolidating here the magnificent seven actually went down so but if we look at the equal weighted s p 500 we see a strong upward move no this means that beyond the seven stocks that have been moving the s p for most of the year no the other 493 stocks are beginning to show signs of strength if we look at the breadth charts we are seeing more stocks going above their 20-day moving averages, more stocks going above their 50-day moving averages, and the 100 moving day averages. No? So rotation is happening. If we look at the sectoral charts, these are the sectors that have led last week. We have regional banks, solar, metals, real estate, materials, biotech, gold, industrials financial sectors. No? So for 2024, remember that last year's winners are usually not going to be the favorite the next year. The most hated sectors may have more upside. Remember in 2022, what was the most hated sector in 2022? It was the tech sector. It was the Magnificent Seven, right? So we'll see. So now let's look at the economic calendar for this week. We have inflation and unemployment numbers for the Philippines this week. Hopefully, we get some good numbers to give the markets some good news. Meanwhile, more jobs data coming out for the U.S. next week, beginning with the JOLTS report, the initial jobless claims, and the unemployment rate and the non farm payrolls on Friday to end the week. I'd like to end with another quote from Charlie Munger. The best thing a human being can do is to help another person human being no more and this has really been the goal when i started monday market outlook more than one year ago i started this vlog in november of 2022 and it has been a great 2023 so far and i hope i was able to help everyone with valuable information to help you make more informed investment decisions. So I'm looking forward to another year of sharing our investment journey together. Thank you very much for subscribing and watching the show every week. To the Sunday Gang, Jennifer, Irby, Raymond, Noel, Go Go Healthy Lifestyle, Ogi, Hilda, Nicolas, Eugene, Carlo, Rugin, De Los Reyes, John Michael, F.S. Cabral, Carlsen, Alan C., Anthony Mark, 
And to the Lim team, Jovan, Darber, Mark, thank you very much for tuning in. Please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel for more market updates. Good luck on your trades. Manage your risk accordingly. And I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.